talking about overcoming uh, forgiveness, right? So I want to just touch on this briefly. No physical or emotional pain happens in a purposeless vacuum, right? One of the purposes is to prepare us to help others, okay? So I'm sure y'all done dealt with unforgiveness. I know I have. I'll be the first one to say. But actually, let me talk about this because David, he was a man after God's own heart, right? And he told it. He had anger built up on the inside of him and everything. He was not playing. You know, this is why you got to pray about um, you. Well, you pray about the person that you need to forgive. But let me say this. David, he was one that God inspired to pen the liberating words of Psalm 62 and 8, right? It says, trust in him at all times, O people, pour out your hearts to him, for God is our refuge, right? So one psalm after another proves that David, even David, he was a man after God's own heart. He practiced what he preached. David, the man after God's own heart, is the very one who spoke of those who had hurt or offended him by saying these things, right? And David, let me read this because, you know, when you have a relationship with God and you are intimate with him, you share the most deepest depths of your heart with him. The things that are really, you know what I'm saying, just eating you up on the inside, right? So if you're dealing with unforgiveness and you really need some help, you need the most how to just really come through for you, right? And to just help you, you know. David was like, not a word from their mouth can be trusted, right? This is what he said in Psalms 5 and 9. He said, their heart is filled with destruction. Their throat is an open grave, okay? With their tongue, they speak deceit. Like, this is stuff that David was telling God. He was telling the Most High. You know, they close up their callous hearts. And their mouths speak with arrogance, right? They have tracked me down. They now surround me with eyes alert, right? And to throw me to the ground. And he was like, rise up, O Lord. Confront them. Bring them down and rescue me. This is what he was saying in Psalm 17 and 10, right? And then he said, but I am a worm and not a man. Scorned by men and despised by the people. So he told God, like, he said, I am a dread to my friends those who see me on the street flee from me i am forgotten by them as though i were dead right this is how he felt he said oh that i had the wings of a dove i will fly away and be at rest don't you feel like that sometime i know i didn't feel like that i'm like god let me fly away and just be at rest you know what i'm saying and because I felt forgotten. You know what I'm saying? I felt like, okay, God, what, what's going on? Like, you know, I've always been the one to walk alone. Even I've always, I'm the only child. You know what I'm saying? And my grandmother, like, took me under her bosom, under her wing. You know what I'm saying? And just loved me with unconditional love. You know what I'm saying? But I always felt like I was alone since I was a little girl. You know what I mean? And I had to grow up. And I was wondering, like, where was my mom? What was she doing? Where was my dad? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, everybody was just doing them. Wasn't nobody worried about Charmaine. They weren't worried about me. I was doing my own thing. You know what I'm saying? I remember my uncle told me he said Charmaine you've been out there a long time by yourself you know how old are you 50 some years old and I'm like no I'm just 38 I'm and this wasn't even when I was 38 I'm 38 now but this is when I was in my 20s you know and this is how David felt he was like you know if I if I will fly away and be at rest, I will flee far away and stay in the desert. I will hurry to my place of shelter, far from the tempest and storm. You know, if an enemy were insulting me, okay, I could endure it. If a foe were raising himself against me, I could hide from him. But it is you. He said, it is you. A man like myself, my companion, my close friend, you know. So this sounded like he was venting anger. He was whining. He com he was complaining, David. He was tattling, okay. And we are too. 
we are to we are invited to bring our complaints to God when we are overwhelmed with the cares of this life you know what I'm saying we are supposed to bring it to God and lay it out before him you know what I'm saying and so in Psalm 64 and 1 David said hear me O God as I voice my complaint, hear me, oh God. He wanted just, he didn't care who else heard him. He wanted the most high to hear him. He like, hear me, oh God. Hear me. You know, so you got to learn how to articulate y'all, your own feelings. Okay. You got to forget about, you know, this ain't about you. This is about your heart, you know. And so you don't want to carry all that stuff around in your heart unforgiveness. You know what I'm saying? So just lay it out before God and you tell God. You tattle to God so he can get that stuff up out of you. This is about your character, you know. This is between you and God. It ain't between you and the person that offended you. No, this is between you and God. Okay, so listen to this, y'all. Another thing is that uh, David, he was like, David was like, uh, hear me, O God, as I voice my complaint. I cry aloud to the Lord. I lift up my voice to the Lord for mercy. Okay, for mercy. I pour out my complaint before him. Before him, I tell my trouble, right? And so, this is what he did. The Holy Spirit who inspired the blessed invitation of Psalm 62 and 8 did not qualify with the words, pour out your heart to God. If what's inside is nice and sweet that ain't what it said the concept of pouring out suggests that some of the contents in our hearts need to go it need to go like anger like hurt like despair doubt bitterness unforgiveness confusion okay the ideal is to pour out the bitter waters that well up in our hearts so that God can pour well springs y'all of living sweet waters back in okay this is why you got to get intimate with God you got to get naked with God okay <laughs> before him and seek him while he may be found right and if what is in the depths of anger hold on and it says if what if I'm sorry and if what is in the depths is anger hurt and all sorts of injury tell him that too what healing we would find if we only understood that God is about real living we leave him out of our feelings emotions temptations and situations he made himself totally available to treat well that he made himself totally available to treat so basically what i'm this video is just really about how god he desired our whole hearts okay that was one reason why david he was a man after god's own heart y'all because he poured his heart out to god Instead of pouring all of his feelings onto everybody else. One of the wonderful things about God's immutable character is that we're not going to tempt him to sin. When we take our negative feelings to him. You know what I'm saying? He can take our frustrations. Man can't. But God can. Okay. And God, he don't feel harmed either. He ain't going to feel harmed by your frustrations so it's two important things y'all that happen when we learn to pray honestly about the person who has hurt us we number one let me give you two things we pour out the heart rather than allow it to remain in our heart and turn bitter right and then we articulate our own feelings thereby placing them in view before our own eyes okay as well as God's, right? So, when you go to Job and you read 23, chapter 23, verses 1 through 5 and 8 through 10, okay, it says, even in my complaint, even today my complaint is bitter, I mean. This hand is heavy in spite of my groaning. If only I knew where to find him. If only I could go to his dwelling. I would state my case before him and fill my mouth with arguments. I will find out what he would answer me. And consider what he would say. 
He said, but if I go to the east, he is not there. If I go to the west, I do not find him. When he is at work in the north, I do not see him. And when he turns to the south, I catch no glimpse of him. But he knows the way that I take. When he has tested me, I will come forth as gold. So this is what it's about. This is the word of God. Job's God did not strike him dead. In fact, he scolded Job's friends for not speaking of God. What was right. Remember, God said, as my servant Job has. He also prospered Job twice as much as before. When all was said and done, Job passed the test. <laughs> he passed the test. So you got to pass the test too, y'all. <laughs> oh, God, don't misunderstand me. I'm not condoning irreverence to God. Let's get that straight. So, our prayers can sometimes help us gain a little insight into our own hearts, okay? Our own hearts. So, when we pour out our heart to God over an injury that you receive from someone, first of all, you will always feel better, okay? You'll always feel better. Always remember that. Remember that scripture is always your example. You know what I mean? Remember when Jesus, he had found Mary Magdalene at the empty tomb and he asked her, he said, woman, why are you crying? Woman, why are you crying? <laughs> and the scripture tells us that Christ looked straight up on the heart of everyone he met and knew all they were thinking. Ain't that something? Even he he was able to foretell events. He knew the secrets of a man's heart. This is why people had consulted him. And then listen, Jesus, he knew why Mary was crying. So why did he ask her the question? Now, I'm going to say this. One reason I believe that Christ had... He asked was to invite her to think about the answer and then articulate it for herself. Most of the times, all the answers that you need, you're able to articulate those answers for yourself. You are. But see, most of the time, people don't trust themselves. They don't trust their intuition. You know what I'm saying? So... It's okay. It's okay. Remember, God looks up on the heart as he hears, okay, the words from our mouth. All right. So, that's just a little bit about overcoming unforgiveness, y'all. So, I love y'all. I'm going to be back with another message, okay? And hopefully this video was not too long. And y'all just stay tuned. I'm going to be talking about sexual strongholds, okay? And how to overcome the enemy. We're going to get deeper into this, okay? And go back and watch my last video today about overcoming idolatry, okay? I love y'all. Y'all have a good day.